Hi, my name is Lauren Bruton and this is vlog one, which will be based around skills and capacities in the weight room. I'll be focusing on two athletes performing the back squat and the hand clean. Throughout this video, I'll be analysing each exercise to indicate whether there is a skill issue or if there is a lack of capacity to determine the reason behind the movement strategy the athlete uses. This is athlete number one, who is a 23-year-old professional football player performing the back squat. She has six years of strength and conditioning training behind her and is a confident squatter. Recently, she's found that she has lost a slight amount of range for her back squat, which, as you can see within this video, she's just off 90 degrees range of motion. When you look on the front view of the video, you can see that her knees are positioned in line with the toes and no apparent valgus motion on ascent or descent. There is a slight waver from the right leg throughout and from the still shot, we can see that there is a small shift of the torso to the right hand side. Looking from the side view, the athlete has adopted a normal bar placement which will allow for a more equal hip to knee force production. She has good hip to knee alignment and parallel back placement with the chest up and heels firmly fixed to the floor throughout. Quite clearly you can see the athlete is unable to reach parallel depth within the squat pattern and at the end of the movement produces a tucking motion through the lumbar spine to produce more range. The knee angle is around 75 degrees and to be able to present high levels of glute and hamstring muscle activation this athlete would need to provide a depth lower than parallel. You can see she still presents a good range of ankle mobility as we use the weight bearing lunge test to analyse this. As this has shown that it is not a factor in the lack of depth, the next potential cause could be looked at is hip flexor mobility. When we look from behind, you can see that the left leg is more visible than the right. The left foot slightly pronates whilst both feet end up externally rotating through the end of descent to try and reach a further depth within the squat. You can also see through this pattern that the left hip externally rotates through the descent phases and anterior tilting through the pelvis is visible from the arch within the lumbar spine. There is also a dip in the bar movement to the right which could prove the right lateral hip shift in this athlete. Naturally your body will find compensatory movement patterns to complete the squat and will naturally shift away from the side with the lack of range of motion. This picture could indicate a potential lack of mobility through that left hip. During hip mobility tests and stretching, this athlete struggled to keep her pelvis from anterior tilting and through the exercise in these photos she felt pinching feelings both sides, more so on the left. When she took the stretch more laterally, when lifting that leg towards her, she felt less pain. This indicates that hip flexion is affected due to tight primary hip flexors such as psoas major, iliacus and rectus femoris. To improve this, athlete one should look to improve hip mobility, mainly through that left side, and if squatting again, starting with a more wider stance with feet turned slightly outwards to allow for more range without relying on hip flexion. This 20 year old athlete is a former amateur runner who has now stopped due to persistent injury problems. She has very limited experience in strength and power lifting exercises and now has also limited daily forms of exercise. As you can see from her back squat performance, there is a lack of control through this movement. The tempo of the squat is too fast and there was very limited setup time. This movement should be performed in a controlled manner to gain more neuromuscular control in the specific muscles used. When you look at a side view, you can see this athlete is unable to reach parallel. On descent, the athlete goes with the knee flexion before flexing through the hip, in turn resulting in the knees falling over the toes and heels coming off the floor. Due to this movement pattern, the athlete is used to complete the squat. It has promoted a forward lean and the force distribution more so through the ball of the foot. If you see the angle of knee flexion, it is close to 90 degrees. However, due to the base of support being through the ball of the foot and heels of the floor, this doesn't result in the femur being parallel to the floor. With this type of squat in motion, this produces sheer forces through the knee joint, which could lead to injury. This athlete would need to alter the shift of base of support to her heels to allow for a more safe position and to gain better strength outcomes. If you compare both athletes, they have both adopted a high bar position and a shoulder whip stance. However, there are significant differences in speed control throughout. 
Athlete 1 produces a more capable squat, whereas Athlete 2 shows a lack of stability and also knowledge of a complete squat in motion. During Athlete 1's practice of the hand clean, she uses a double pull motion. She has had a fair amount of experience within this exercise, which does show throughout. The force she produces through the floor is noticeable with the bar being caught in a high position. She shows good bar trajectory throughout the movement and as you can see through the tracker, she gains good horizontal displacement through both pull 1 and pull 2. As you see from these still photos, you can quite clearly see the start position in within the athlete shows good vertical back placement, knees slightly bent and chest over the bar. Then the next photos show the first pull, unweighted, second pull and the catch phase. However, if you look closely at the catch phase, the athlete struggles to produce the elbows pointing forwards with the humerus parallel to the floor. The elbows point inwards and in turn produces the wrist to externally rotate. You can also see once the athlete gets in this position, you start to see an anterior tilt, which could indicate tightness through the latissimus dorsi. This mobility can have a detriment to the exercise, and when this athlete adds more weight to the bar, it could make it a little bit more difficult to catch in a safe manner. Also, during the catch phase, the athlete catches the bar with the base of support going through the balls of the feet. This small skill issue can be addressed by keeping heels on the floor and sitting into the squat position, which could be a natural movement if there was more weight on the bar. As you can see here, taking the athlete through this stretch phase on the bar, she felt tightness through her latissimus dorsi and slight tricep pain. Going through mobility exercises through the latissimus dorsi could prove inf influential to this athlete in performing the catch and in turn allowing her to add more weight to the bar. During athlete 2's performance of the hand clean, you can tell she is inexperienced with this exercise. She adopts a one pull motion and tends to use a significant amount of arm force to pull the bar to the catch position. If you watch the bar in slow motion view from the side, the bar is positioned away from the base of support due to the significant knee flexion, enabling her to keep her body over the bar in the start phase. To be able to get the bar past the knees means the athlete produces more force through the arms to lift the bar. As you can see from the still photo, there is severe knee valgus movement, with the knees also falling over the toes. There is also a significant pronation, with the feet turned out quite dramatically, which could increase that knee valgus motion. This catch position is deemed unsafe movement, and if used, this could increase injury risk through the knee joint. Again, comparing the, this athlete, hand clean with her bar back squat, you can see similar markers that appear in both exercises. In the catch phase, the athlete catches it low, where it doesn't rest on the chest, and is still being lifted by the arms. There is also a dip in the bar position to the right, where the bar is not caught correctly. As the bar started away from the base of support, to be able to produce good horizontal displacement to get the body under the bar come the catch phase. So the bar at this point ends up finishing away from the base of support and producing a lack of stability from the athlete. This athlete needs a good amount of training through this exercise to improve in this area. However, looking at this athlete's capacity issues, increase in range of motion through ankle dorsiflexion would be beneficial to prevent significant rage in the foot turning out and reduce pronation and knee valgus motion. Comparing both the hand clean in athlete 1 and athlete 2, again you can see there is a skill issue within athlete 2. She adopts a one pull motion, whereas athlete one produces the more efficient pull, two pull movement. The start positions differ with athlete two, having the bar further away from the base of support. However, both athletes produce a lack of range of motion through the external rotation of the shoulder. Although athlete one catches the bar with the same weight distribution through both arms and has control of the bar throughout. 